What makes a woman look good in the kitchen? While the U.S. sugar industry stepped up its ad campaign to sweeten our palates in the 1960s, cherry cheese pie from bags of imperial pure cane sugar. It was quietly paying the country's top Ivy League school to discredit evidence of the health risks of sugar. Codenamed Project 226, the industry was funneling thousands of dollars to a pair of influential Harvard nutritionists, led by Dr. Mark Hegstead. One secret memo spells out the terms of the payoff, have to be paid when you start work on the project, and the remainder when you inform us that the article has been accepted for publication. The scientists' job was to review and dismiss findings that linked high sugar consumption to heart disease and instead blame saturated fat and cholesterol, giving sugar a free pass. In one memo, Hegstead responds to the Sugar Association, we are well aware of your particular interest and will cover this as well as we can. The findings would be published in a top medical journal. It was such a prestigious institution with such an impeccable record, uh, Harvard University, and that it was the New England Journal of Medicine. So I took this paper and crossed out where it said tobacco and put in sugar. Schmidt is part of a University of California team that uncovered Project 226 and the documents at Harvard's Med School Library. The California professors have spent years unearthing revelations about the sugar industry's deep influence on public policy with its simple message. Don't worry about sugar. Focus on cholesterol and fat. That really shapes uh, the scientific agendas for scientists. It may even shape funding agendas. That message left out the risks of high sugar diets, which are now being blamed for the obesity crisis. And today there is growing scientific consensus sugar could play a larger role in heart disease risk than fat and cholesterol. The problem is bigger than this. It's, um, it's about um, all of the food industry influencing federal government policy. This lawyer says blatant conflicts of interest persist today in Canada. Koch has poured millions into funding research that says exercise, not diet, is the best way to fight obesity. And that's just one example. Health Canada's Food Expert Advisory Committee, in which about half of the members of the advisory committee um, are either representatives of the food industry or have uh, investments in it or consult with it. The lead Harvard scientist in Project 226 went on to work for the U.S. government to help draft dietary guidelines, which for decades resisted daily limits on sugar. As for the U.S. Sugar Association, it admits it should have been transparent about those payments to Harvard, but insists that doesn't mean the research is tainted. Vicodopia, CBC News, Toronto.